Welcome guys to my first ancestry video on everybody's most familiar race, the human. I'm sure you have heard of them, you might have even seen one in your day to day life, or hell, you could actually be a human. It's more likely than you think. Originally I had a huge script that covered human history from ancient Aslan to Osirian to modern day, but I didn't think that that would be very interesting for my first ancestry video, but if it's something everyone would be interested in, let me know in the comments and I can finish it and post it in a later date. But in this video, I'm going to dive into humans as a playable ancestry and give a general overview of their heritages and their backgrounds. I'm going to read over appearance details and some quick facts about each, but on screen I will list male and female names and an example photo of each ethnicity. Aslant was the rough start of humanity, where humans were either manipulated or created outright by the Aboliths. Largely extinct now, the Aslanti were a regal, elegant folk with handsome features. Their skin tones ranged from olive to pale white, and their hair tended toward darker colors, with deep browns and dark reds being the most common. Today, a deep purple eye color is seen as absolute proof of a strong Aslanti heritage, which is a form of bragging right. Some of the Aslanti fled to the Darklands and became the Morlocks, while others remained in the oceans with the Aboliths and became the Asarkets, or the Gilmen. Gilmen are uniformly pale-skinned and dark-haired, otherwise human, with the addition of three gills on each side of their necks. Morlocks have it a little bit rougher, with centuries of inbreeding have led them to become degenerated monsters with large bulging white eyes, large flesh tearing teeth, and ears that are angled like bats. They appear emasticated and have a habit of running on all fours. Chalaxians are the descendants of Aslanti survivors, who interbred with pale-skinned Ulfin raiders from the north. They tend toward dark hair, dark eyes, and very pale skin. Red hair is often seen as evidence of strong ties to diabolic influence, which can be a boon or a curse depending on the Chalaxian's actual affiliation. They have sharp features, narrow jaws, strong noses, and thin arched eyebrows. Cheliax used to be a part of Taldor, but broke free when Taldor overextended the reach of their empire. They claimed the southwestern portion of Avistan and succeeded in becoming the center of Aridin worship. With a prophecy saying Aridin would return soon, Cheliax was primed to be ground zero for the golden age of humanity, but Aridin failed to show up. When he failed to show, Cheliax exploded into a civil war that only ended when Abrigail Thrun signed a pact with Asmodeus for control of Cheliax, officially changing the religion of Cheliax to devil worship. The Gurundi are thought to be descendants of the most ancient peoples of Galarian. They were around during the reign of Aslan and Thassalon, but unlike these two, the Gurundi managed to last through the Earthfall. However, it is known that the Grundy managed to pull humanity out of the Dark Ages with the formation of the Jiska Imperium, Ancient Osirion, Shori, and the Tecratanan League, all great civilizations and all formed in Gurun. Gurundi are amongst the tallest humans on Galarian, usually a head above any others, with high cheekbones, broad shoulders, and fairly dark skin. Their dark hair is often worn in long braids, or other elaborate styles, or adorned with fine jewelry. Gurundi tend to live in clans of about 15 to 20 families that live and travel together, not for adventure or a love of travel, but rather a quest for a home to shape and make their own. Gurundi names typically reflect their status in society, with the children of high-ranking families named after a city or major geographical locations. Lesser statuses may choose local landmarks as their name, while the lowest in a clan will have names reflecting the most minor of landmarks, such as street names. Kalashites are superior, or at least they truly believe they are. They are known for their vanity and adore luxury, and haggling and selling is elevated to an art form. They are aggressive people and their fiery passion makes them quick to anger, but most Kalashites are equally quick to forgive. Despite their tempers, they prefer to talk their way out of trouble rather than to grab a sword. Unlike most cultures, Kalashites view their daughters as absolute treasures, 
fathers, brothers, and husbands indulged them in every way, treating them like the most precious of jewels. Many Kalashites think nothing of dropping chests of gold to purchase the finest in teas, carpets, and especially horses. Wealthy Kalashites obsess over horse breeding and racing, and will scour all corners of Galarian for the perfect sires for their own stables. This dedication to perfection is the main reason that Kalashite warhorses are respected and feared continent-wide. Kalashites have almost uniformly black hair with brown or golden eyes. They tend toward lean and gold or a tawny skin, although midnight black or pale white skin are hardly unknown. The men tend to th grow th thick but well-maintained beards. Their clothing will range from gauzy silks to practical linen and cotton robes, with headdresses, veils, and turbans common to keep the sun and sand out of their hair and eyes. Kelids are as savage and unforgiving as the lands they live in, from the tundras of the realm of the mammoth lords to the wastelands of the world wound. Kelids are defined by their survival, their fondness for violence, and their savage lifestyle. Clad in leather and fur pelts, they waged battles against the winter witches of Irisin, the demons of the world wound, and the arcanist of the Black Sovereign, giving them an intense distrust of all magic users. In civilized lands, Kelids become impatient with the flowery prose of diplomats, and they rarely bother learning to read, diverting their time to much more important tasks like food gathering, hunting, or fighting. However, Kelids know and embrace the view that they are uneducated, knowing that their foes will underestimate them, and a foe who has underestimated you has already defeated themselves. Kelids are tough, dark-haired folk who bear the scars of their tough lives with pride. Tanned from years spent outside, they tend toward black, blue, or steel gray eye colors, with dark brown or black hair that is prone to early graying. A Kelid bears their scars with pride, and one with no scars is not a Kelid to be trusted. They are viewed as a Kelid who has given in to the pleasures of a comfortable life, and even their kin distrust them. The Mwangi people are actually five separate groups, made up of the Bekyar, the Banuwats, the Kaldaru, Moxie, and the Zinj, and any other undiscovered groups in the vast unexplored regions of this continent. For example, the Bekyar are from the Kava lands and surrounding regions. They tend toward the tall and lanky side, sporting highly elaborate hairstyles and dark leathers. The Bekyar embrace slavery, and if they can't secure slaves from others, they are not above selling their own kin. The Banuwat are colorful and friendly, with generous smiles and expressive faces. They favor colorful, loose pantaloons and vests, appropriate for a group renowned for their fishing, sailing, and seaborne trade routes. They enjoy sepia brown skin, black hair, and colorful eyes of various greens, blues, and hazels. The Moxie seem alien when compared to the other Mwangi natives, with ashen skin, freckles, and angular faces. They are withdrawn and aloof, having inserted themselves into the upper classes of Thuvia, and now, they seek to distance themselves from the rest of the Mwangi people. The Zinj, the most abundant of the tribes scattered across the inner Mwangi, are slightly shorter on average, with slender muscular frames, umber skin, and tightly curled black hair. Most Zinj practice, or at least follow, shamanism, and spend their time herding their goats and other animals. The Kaldaru are a smaller group, concentrated in the merchant city-state of Zingor. They frequently have blue or green eyes and gold tawny skin. It is unknown where the Kaldaru originated from, but they do recall their ancestors coming from a distant land. Because of the way other cultures tend to lump all the Mwangi together, all five groups are commonly painted with tales of slavery, cannibalism, and genocide. And while yes, this can be true, especially in the case of the Bakirs, to paint all the groups as savages is a severe misrepresentation of them. The Shanti of northern Berizia are nomads from the south who are forced north by Chalaxian colonists. Seven distinct tribes tied together by a shared history, the Shanti respect each of the other tribes and settle disputes amongst themselves with ritual combat instead of resorting to open warfare. The tribes will be quickly described here, 
and I refuse to apologize for the slaughter of the English language that is about to transpire. There's the Lyroon Kwa, who are archers and hunters, the Shod Kwa, who are fishermen and sailors, the Shri Kiri Kwa, who are riders and animal trainers, the Shundar Kwa, who are diplomats and magicians, the Sklar Kwa, who are warriors and soldiers, the Skone Kwa, who serve as guardians of the dead, and the Tamir Kwa, who are raiders and mountaineers. Typically tall and strongly built, with tawny or fawn skin that is heavily tanned by the elements, the surest sign of Ashanti are the bald heads and complex tattoos worn across their bodies. They see hair as a combat weakness, and as such, many males and females shave the hair from their heads, or at least keep it as short as possible. These tattoos are incredibly detailed, telling the wearer's personal history, the history of their tribes, and their own guardian spirits or deities. As unique as their tattoos are, Ashanti will discard their birth names after undergoing a rite of passage and adopt an adult name of their choice. Nidalese are native to the land of Nidal in central Avistan and one of the oldest surviving countries due to a dark pact with Zon Kuthan from before the Earthfall. The descendants of the ancient Nidalese still honor this pact, willingly or not. They are a slender, delicate looking people with ashen gray skin, black hair that is often cut short or shaved, and a strong tendency toward black irises. I could not locate a good picture of this heritage, but I did find this photo of the Nidalese prisoners. The Irtaki are a collection of people who live in the far north of Galarian, among the glaciers of the crown of the world. Short and compact with rich terracotta skin, the Irataki are semi-nomadic. They follow the migration of reindeer or musk ox, while others live off the coast, fishing and whaling in the waters surrounding the crown of the world. Constantly aware of the limits of humanity, the Irataki strive to live along nature, instead of against it, like most of the rest of Galarian. Taldins come from East Avistan, and at one time they ruled over half of the continent. However, corruption within the empire led to huge losses and an inability to recolonize their previous holdings. Today, Taldor is in decline, but their contributions to art, literature, and scholastics is evident continent-wide. The Taldin language is so sp widespread, it's the tongue known as common, spoken by most of Galarian's inhabitants. Taldins are still arrogant acting as if they still controlled half of Avistan, and their egos are known to cause disagreements. Many a Taldin can be seen strutting down the street, stroking a carefully groomed beard, and speaking loudly of last night's conquest. It's weird, who comes to mind with that description when you really stop and think about it? Taldins typically have bronze, gold, or tawny skin, lightly curled brown hair, hook noses, and green-gray or amber eyes. The Tien, much like the Mwangi, are a term for the many different residents of several kingdoms and countries, in this case, the residents of Tien Sha. I believe Tien Sha deserves its own video, so I will go in depth on them in a future video, but for now, we will discuss the Tian Shu. Tian Shu are the most populous of the Tian people, and the most common to find in the Inner Sea region. Typically characterized by small statures, dusky skin, and black or dark brown straight hair, the men tend to rarely grow taller than five and a half feet, while women barely break five feet in height. Tian children are occasionally born with stark white or silver white hair, which is considered an omen of greatness. Such children often become influential leaders and poets of the highest caliber and families who birth a white-haired child receive great honor and frequently an instant increase in rank and wealth. The Olfen are the most traveled of Galarian's humans, hailing from northern Avistan and the land of the Lenorm kings. Rather than trying to eke a living from the rocky soil of their homelands, many will seek their fortunes abroad. Some become raiders, descending on villages from their longboats, while others are traders and explorers, traveling as far as Gurund or Vudra. Others become mercenaries, for no one is more known for their loyalty than the Olfen. 
Years of conflict with the dangerous creatures of the North have taught the Ulfin to be on alert at all times. Children are trained in combat as soon as they can grip a sword, and during an attack, the children will retreat to the attics of their homes to fire arrows at enemies or creatures from safety. Men and women alike fight equally in defense of clan and village, with neither gender looked on as the weaker than the other. They tend to stand out, as they are a tall, broad-shouldered people. Ulfin tend towards fair skin, rosy cheeks, and blonde, light brown, or red hair. Beards are common amongst men, and hair is usually re braided, regardless of gender. Verizians are the most widespread of Avistan's people, with land stretching from Verizia in the west to the borders of Numeria in the east. Outsiders may associate Verizians with Roman caravans, the practice of harrow card reading, and the favored worship of Desna, the goddess of dreams but they do hold permanent residence in the cities of Magnamar, Lepidstadt, and others, where they outnumber their traveling kin a hundred times over. They are a wiry, short people with tawny, gold, or russet brown skin, and a wide array of hair and eye colors. While most stay true to these attributes, rarer features such as violet eyes or platinum hair are also not uncommon. They tend to be lithe and long-limbed, and the men often have trouble growing full facial hair, leading to patchy or stringy beards. They enjoy flowing, beautifully embroidered garments of red, greens, blues, and purples, often adorned with coin and bell. They've received a bit of a bad reputation, in large part to the activity of the Skarni, a notorious band of thieves. They are less nomadic than many of their kin, and they tend to settle in cities for months or years to run thug operations before moving on when the heat gets too high. Tales of elaborate rigged games in city centers or thieves picking the pockets of tavern goers add to this bad reputation, but most Verissians are a free, peace-loving people. The Vudrani hail from the distant, impossible kingdoms of Vudra, a collection of semi-independent kingdoms in the southeast of Kazmaran. The Vudrani who have moved into the Inner Sea region mostly originated from Jalmare, off the coast of Nex. Vudra is a strange collection of nations that has maintained stability largely in parts to their religious beliefs. The Vudrani believe heavily in caste, tradition, and fate that seeking to rise higher than the caste you were born into is a sure way to be reincarnated lower on the scale of life, and that the larger your ambition, the larger you fall when you inevitably fail. The Vudrani are slim and slight in build, with dark hair, eyes, and skin tones that range from tawny to umber. Men often wear beards and long and extravagant styles, while women are fond of gold and other jewelries. Both genders enjoy the use of piercings and colorful makeup to accent their natural beauty. They dress in soft cloths and silks, festooned with sweeping scarves and flowing robes. In Avistan, they dress to impress, and it wouldn't be uncommon to assume a Vudrani was a member of nobility by dress alone. Despite my best efforts, this is not an exhaustive list of human ethnicities, and I'm sure more will be added as second edition goes on. There are three more mentioned in the Lost Omens character guide, but are not heavily elaborated on. The Lobarians are a diverse people found east of Ravoy, likely distant relatives of Ulfin, Kelids, and the Taldans. They live in small clans in the wilds, raiding one another for cattle and other supplies as needed. Travelers in Irisen may meet the Jadwiga, who once were rulers of Irisen. Collectively, they trace their ancestry to one of the witch queens and to their common mother, the ancient witch Baba Yaga. Jadwiga have an affinity for ice magic and are pale with white blonde hair and frequently have pale or sea green eyes, and they tend to star in Disney movies. The Varki are relatives of the Irataki who traveled south past the glaciers at the crown of the world. They originate in the mountains of northern Avistan, where most make a living as hunters and herders. And there we go, guys. 21 ethnicities for you to slap onto any kind of human you want to make. Personally, 
This video has made me want to make an Olfin fighter because I want to go full on Viking. I just think that would be so cool. Throw in an enchanted hammer of returning and look at you, you're Thor. I'd love to see any kind of character ideas you've come up with before or because of this video. So if you feel like sharing, please drop it in the comments and let me know what's going on. As of posting this video, I'm sitting at 880 subscribers, only 120 away from that 1000 subscriber mark. When I hit that 1000 subs, I'm going to be doing a giveaway where you can either get a t-shirt with my logo on it or a six inch statue of your D&D character made on Hero Forge. So please guys, feel free to subscribe, comment, like, all that stuff and leave it in the comments to let me know that you liked this video, you found it useful. But thanks for watching guys, this is Sir Vertigo and I'll see you next week when we continue on with our series on the Plains of Galarian.